Carbon restrictions are here to bend the emissions curve. In the science fiction novel, The Ministry for the Future, a devastating heat wave in India kills 20 million people and spurs the creation of a secretive group called the Children of Kali. The group sabotages fossil fuel powered ships and planes, which forces countries and companies to adopt zero carbon alternatives to keep the economy ticking. Even in fiction, however, violence isn't anyone's preferred way to beat climate change. But there is a larger point to the story. Few have realized that meeting the goals of the Paris Agreement isn't just about advancing clean energy or capturing carbon dioxide from the air. The world will also have to find ways to keep most fossil fuel reserves in the ground. That's the conclusion not just of climate activists, but also the International Energy Agency, whose entire aim is to secure the world's energy supplies and support economic growth. The easiest way to bring carbon restrictions is to deploy a carbon tax, which makes polluters pay. Some 40 countries in the world have such policies, but the tax is rarely high enough to make a serious dent in emissions. That's why many countries are turning to outright bans. Take three examples from just this year. California announced a ban on new fracking from 2024 and end all oil production by 2045. Denmark stopped giving new licenses for oil and gas exploration with the existing production set to end by 2050. France passed a bill that will forbid conventional air travel if the journey can be made by train in less than two and a half hours. These types of policies are adding to even bigger restrictions passed over the last few years. Many European countries are phasing out coal power plants. Multiple Californian cities have banned natural gas connections in new buildings. And more than 10 countries around the world have announced a ban on the sale of new gasoline-powered cars, with Norway's ban kicking in as soon as 2025. The European Union is even considering levying a carbon border tariff. If imported goods come from a country that does not levy an equivalent carbon price as the Europeans do, then a surcharge is added to ensure that the domestic industry does not suffer. One way or another, society will have to face up to the policies that keep a good chunk of fossil fuels in the ground, or pay the price in suffering that climate change will unleash. This is Net Zero. I am Akshatrati. Follow us on your favorite platforms for more.